You wanted more secret locations. I heard you. Let's do it. Here are the top 10 secret locations in history you weren't supposed to know about, part three. Number 10. Washington Monument. This is one of those things that I wish I got to do as a job, you know? Like, YouTube's fun, but also, this is pretty fun too. But again, I have a fear of heights, so there's no way I could physically do this ever. You can go inside the Washington Monument, that's no surprise, nor secret. But did you know there's a secret hatch hiding at the very top? In Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter has to save his classmates. They're stuck in the elevator shaft in the monument. Now, in order to reach them before they fall, he has to kick through this tiny window at the very top. He almost doesn't make it, it takes like three good Spidey kicks. Turns out he could have crawled four feet higher to the top and opened this secret hatch. And then, guy could have called it a day, easy. No web fluid, nor powers needed, my friends. Also, a pretty boring climax. Yeah, you don't need Spider-Man to clean the monument, just people who aren't afraid of heights. Then they pop out of this. They open the hatch and then, uh, they just sweep it. I can't even look at this photo, I feel sick to my stomach. <sighs> Number nine, secret insect room. Okay, back to the buggy weirdness, here we go. If you're in Liverpool and you love insects, Okay, very specific, but I have just a place for you. Inside the World Museum in Liverpool lies a secret room, and inside it contains a million insects. Yeah, Mitchie, just thinking about this room. They're all dead, by the way, unlike the other ones that I mentioned. These ones aren't ripping apart any carcassi. Carcassi? Carcasses? Yeah, carcassi sounds fun. This collection began back in 1855, the 13th Earl of Derby. He's like, you know what I need? A cupboard full of shiny bugs. Let's start that. Thousands of specimens hide in this room, including the world's largest beetle and moth. So gross, I almost had a little saliva when I said that. It felt really gross saying that. The world's largest beetle, oh, it's so gross, they're so shiny. Imagine Night at the Museum, but it takes place here at the World Museum in London. Bugs everywhere, Ben Stiller wouldn't make it out. No way, no way in hell. Owen Wilson, little Owen Wilson, toast. Number eight, Eiffel Tower apartment. I live on the 11th floor and let me tell you, way too high. That's like 10 stories higher than I could preferably handle. Like I mentioned earlier, I am not a fan of heights at all. My legs get all shaky. Uh, maybe it's because I'm tall already. I don't know, but it sucks. But this one here gives me a hard time as well. Above the Eiffel Tower, above the main observation deck, when it was completed back in 1889, Gustave Eiffel, the, you know, Mr. Eiffel himself who made the blueprints, he included for himself a sweet little condo at the very top. This 100 square meter room sounds spacey at first, but it was full of gear, the elevator shaft was there, it was kind of like Harry Potter's closet in comparison to the rest of the house, you know what I mean? This room had a kitchen, bathroom, thank God, and a living room. God forbid you open a window though, papers would be all over the place. Gustav's hair must have been messy all the time. Number seven, Trafalgar Square. Come on down to Trafalgar Square. We got tiny police stations. It's a Rick and Morty joke. Little Brits, come on, that's a great one. Back in 1926, strikes and protests were every other week. It's almost like, you know, increased to labor and a 13% wage cut is a bad thing. Weird, odd. So workers in every industry all went on strike. They stopped working for nine days and most of these protests would happen in London's Trafalgar Square. So in order to keep an eye on things without looking like you're, you know, keeping an eye on things in 1926, you know, walking around, smacking a bat in your hands, blowing smoke in people's faces, you know, that kind of stuff. Shit they do in Peaky Blinders. Yeah, you can't do that. It doesn't really calm a crowd down. So instead, the police built a tiny secret police station in one of the large light posts. Yeah, they're just hiding in a light post, just ready to, ready to tackle someone. Imagine a dog starts peeing on the post and then all of a sudden 15 police officers come out of said light post. I'm so confused. I'd be confused for the rest of my life. It looks fake, it looks like a little information kiosk. Nope, just a SWAT team inside, ready to go. Number six, Supreme Court Basketball Court. A court in a court? What is this, Inception? What's going on here? This is the Supreme Court, mainly referred to as the highest court in the land. Back in the 40s, this was the storage room for the courthouse, but over time, it turned into a workout room, being so large, I wouldn't even call that a storage room in the first place, right? But courthouse employees would work out there, and eventually some genius decided to throw up a couple of backboards, so yes, there's a basketball court right above the Supreme Court. Yeah, imagine hearing players' shoes squeaking during a trial. Your Honor, I believe somebody just got juked out. I don't know, that's what it sounds like. Number five, Brooklyn Bridge Wine Cellar. Here we go. I'm not a wine guy myself, but I respect sommeliers. They all have that cool mustache and like to mansplain to you about grapes. Very, very good job, I like it. I like getting mansplained about what I'm drinking and why I'm drinking it. They have books about wine just stored in their head at all times, it's a very impressive job. They know everything about grapes and they're also pretty cool, what a dream job. Wine is a lifestyle to many, so if you live in New York City and you're a big fan of Merlot, well, listen up. 
The Brooklyn Bridge connects Manhattan and Brooklyn, right? It was built in 1883, and at the time, it was the longest bridge in the world until 1903. Chief bridge engineer John A. Roebling, as well as his son, Washington Roebling, cool name, they both worked on the building plans, and in order to help the city financially, after you, you know, just spent 15 million on a bridge, they included two wine cellars, one on each shore, as well as other chambers that could be rented out. Not a bad gig, not a bad Airbnb, if you ask me. The plan worked, and over the following 40 years, wine was stored in the dark, cool granite cellars on both sides. Number four. Mount Rushmore. When sculptor Gutzon Borglum carefully planned out his designs for Mount Rushmore, the iconic American landmark in South Dakota, he included a hidden room. The room's purpose was to ideally be a time capsule, right? In a titanium vault full of records telling the story of Mount Rushmore's construction and all that American stuff. So it doesn't get lost thousands of years in the future. Now, you know, I think carving presidents faces into the sacred land of natives was enough, but Sure, let's add a vault. The Hall of Records was meant to be this massive hall with an 800 foot staircase, bronze walls, a massive bronze eagle. He wanted future generations to look at this place in awe as we do like Stonehenge, right? Work began in July 1938, but after a year, the project was put on halt to, you know, focus on the president's first maybe. Let's finish that job before we do the secret vaults in the back. Borglum sadly passed away in 1941, so the 70 foot cave that was completed was now the vault. Yeah, not as big or flashy as he wanted in the first place, but still, there is a titanium vault behind the 1,200 pound slab of granite. Number three, Grand Central Tennis Court. It's kind of hard to mention the Supreme Supreme Court without talking about the tennis courts at Grand Central. Yeah, those exist too, let's do it. In the early 1800s, trade and banking fueled the city, specifically via railroad. Both freight and passenger, it was booming, right? We love trains, gotta get those train bonds. So come 1871, Grand Central now opens up, but the Vanderbilt Tennis Club opened in 1965. Wasn't even tennis either. This room had also been a recording studio, an art gallery, it hosted breakdancing, boxing, double dutch tournaments, you name it. If you ever see a sweaty guy walk out of a janitor's closet with a bunch of tennis balls, go in there, go poke around a bit. Something's going on. It's like when Spider-Man comes out of the closet, Spider-Man 2 with all the pizzas. Nobody asks questions, they're like, hey, Where'd that guy just come from? Where'd all this delicious pizzas come from? Number two, cursed music box. Okay, we gotta include another horrifying element from the Warren Occult Museum. We all love that in the other parts, so let's continue it. The Perrin Family Music Box. Remember this? Director James Wan wanted to use the music box in the first film, in The Conjuring, because mirrors and creepy tones make for great suspense, of course. But also, this was a real haunted artifact from the real house. Today, the box is safely stored in the Warren's Occult Museum, alongside other items that look more or less normal upon first glance, and then you get close and your soul becomes possessed. You know, they're all haunted, never go in this room. This part in the movie actually scared the shit out of me. Any mirror scene, I can't do it. I just end up eating my shirt. And finally, number one, Mayan underworld. Going back over to the ancient Maya, let's finish off strong. Back in 2003, quite recent, in Mexico, archeologist Sergio Gomez arrived to work. The beautiful Mayan serpent pyramid, that's where he worked, right? What a, what a gig. Out of nowhere, there was a sinkhole that just appeared overnight on property, but it was super close to the actual pyramid. So Sergio covered it with a tent quickly, obviously not knowing where to begin with this now stressful situation at one of the most historical sites on the planet. Sergio had to go in there and figure out where it led to, right? That's obviously the next question. Sergio had been working there for 30 years prior. He knew the Serpent Pyramid pretty well at that point, but what he found that day was hiding underneath him that entire time for 30 years. He got a few coworkers to lower him into the fresh sinkhole, so right off the bat, this guy deserves a raise. Let's do that, let's figure that out first. He was lowered into this secret tunnel, this ancient tunnel. This tunnel was blocked off purposely thousands of years ago, so there's lots of work to be done, but why was it blocked off, right? That's the big question. The tunnel was excavated for about a year afterwards, and it was determined that it was blocked on purpose to stop people from going back and forth. Because all these pyramids connected to one another. The tunnel connected the Serpent Pyramid to the Temple of the Moon and to the Temple of the Sun. Now, it's one thing to discover secret tunnels and pyramid entrances your entire life, but to fall down another layer of secrets almost 30 years later? I don't know, it's kinda something's afoot here. I have a feeling we'll never know who really built these or why, but I'm on it, I'm figuring it out. If you want a part four, gladly, let's keep this train going. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not afraid of, uh, no, I am afraid of heights. I'm not afraid of heights. I'm just lying all of a sudden.